I Love Mortgage Brokering, Episode 3. Want to learn from the top 5% of mortgage brokers in the country? Then you have come to the right place. Join Scott Peckford on I Love Mortgage Brokering. Hi, Broker Nation. This is Scott Peckford. I'm just thrilled to introduce our guest today. It's Greg Nowick from the Greg Nowick Mortgage Team based out of Nanaimo and Vancouver. He's one of the top producing brokers in Western Canada. And today he's going to share a little bit about his business and just what he's done to to grow it. So, hey, Greg, how's it going? Uh, Great, Scott. Thanks for having me. So can you just tell me a little bit about yourself personally and about your business? Sure. Kind of, I don't think anybody starts in this industry as a mortgage broker. I think now they do, but not years ago. I've been doing it for 25 years. Started with a TD Bank in '89. It's one of the first BDOs, and uh, in '91 decided that I should be a broker because we needed some, we needed others, uh, other choices for customers other than just one product. And uh, so I've been doing it for 25 years. Cool. And what about your like personal, you you know, married stuff like that? Oh, well, it's yeah. I'm, I'm married 33 years happily. Congratulations! Uh, so, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, we, we have lots of fun together. Got two kids. Uh, Andrea is in Edmonton. Uh, she's a speech pathologist, married, uh, homeowner, and uh, great husband. And uh, Miles is now in the business, so he's 25. Cool. Yeah. They, so, they... Uh, m- moved over to Nanaimo for lifestyle. So we live in the water in Yellow Point, and it's just a beautiful spot. And mortgages are a lot smaller over here, but uh, you know, there's something to be said for balance. Right. Yeah. And that's always the trick with family and trying to, you know, I love, I love business and being a mortgage broker, but it's always trying to keep that in check with family. Oh, you have to. You absolutely have to. So, but still love the business. And like I say, nobody, I don't think anybody starts with the idea of getting into being a mortgage broker, but, uh, you know, I sort of fluked into it and, and, uh, and still love it. So tell me about when you made the transition from TD, working for TD Bank to switching to a broker. So what, what, what was that like? Like what? Actually, it was kind of funny because we had a, uh, we were working with a broker who's my cousin, Jeff Willis, and we had a rental to sale conversion out in Surrey. So we were the, the bank people and he was the broker. And we found that uh, we were able to do part of the mortgages through TD Bank and he was doing the rest through a bunch of different lenders. And we decided this is ridiculous. Why are we doing, you know, why are we dealing with one lender? Let's have some choice. So that's when we made the change. And uh, of course, the big thing there for customers uh, at the time, all we had was rate. And uh, and that's what we did. We transitioned over to the broker side and still had access to the TD Bank and it worked out really well. So it was like working in a development and seeing the doing stuff as a uh, bank specialist and seeing someone else who had a few more uh, tools in their tool belt that could help people out. You thought, hey, let's I want to do that. Absolutely. Back in 1991, you know, we had uh, uh, First Line came out with this quarter point discount, and we thought, holy smokes, that was just a huge competitive advantage. So we thought, well, if we had that in our tool belt along with with some bank products. Uh, wouldn't that be helpful for us? So that's when we decided to become brokers. So uh, it worked out really well. Cool. And so before we dive into your story, I always like to ask about a success quote that you, because I love quotes and just the, you know, getting inspired by other people. So one uh, quote that has impacted your life or your business. Well, you know what? It's funny. I don't even know if it's a quote or not, but I've always sort of walked around with the attitude that, uh, or with, with, uh, with the quote that it's your, your job is 90% attitude and 10% effort. And that's what we tried to instill within our group and uh, within our customers as well. And of course, our catchphrase now is is utilizing your cash flow with some budgeting tools to allow you at the end of the year to use that extra money to pay off debts, increase assets, and have fun. And uh, and it's really worked. And we did it personally for ourselves first years and years ago. And then I'll tell you about the transition uh, further on in your questions. Cool. Yeah, no, that's awesome. 90% attitude and 10% effort. I agree. The right attitude makes a huge difference in, uh, Absolutely. in your success. Absolutely. You know, you got to get up, you got to get up every morning and, and uh, enjoy going to work. Do you do it every day? Not a flipping chance, but uh, you know, the majority of the time you're at work, you've got to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. So that, so this particular, like how you've applied this in your business by just, I mean, I've been around you, I've known you for a while and I've been around you. You definitely are a very positive, you're kind of, I, I call you the life of the party. And uh, so in your business, you, how have you specifically applied that sort of that attitude? To- well, and it's funny because, you know, I got a good buddy of mine who says every day is a party. And I think that, uh, you know, one of the things, I think everybody has something happen in their life and, and, and we're lucky enough to be still here after those things happen. And you have epiphanies and you go, okay, what's really important here? And, and it, it really is important to enjoy what you're doing mm-hmm. and incorporate that into your work. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. Attitude makes it. I mean, with a good attitude, even a tough job can be fun. Oh, absolutely. So what, one of the things I also find, too, for me is that when I make I, I fail at something or something doesn't work out the way I hope that 
in, in analyzing it after the fact, there's always a lesson in it and I learned from it. So I'd love for you to share a story of something that you tried or worked on and it didn't work and then what you had learned from it. I think that, you know, within the industry, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that try new things. You know, we're always trying new things. And, and I think the key with it is that you learn from it. You either, it either works or it doesn't work. And, and you can't take it personally. I think the biggest thing that we find is that um, if you don't do a deal for a person, you can't take it personally. It's because they made the decision to change, um, to change what they want to do or you just can't help them. And I think that uh, I think that's the most important aspect. I think that uh, we, we, for example, this morning we had a customer who's uh, um, got a specific, they're dealing with a specific bank, and uh, they went in to do their renewal, and they gave us a call, and uh, we said we do something better. But in the same respect, I also phoned their bank and said, "Look, you're going to lose a customer unless you do this, this, and this." And they did it. So I don't get paid for it. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you, uh, the spin-off of that is unbelievable. And I think that's. That's what you have to do. You have to learn from um, you have to learn from understanding that that you're not going to get every deal. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's what happens after the fact. You know, someone once told me that it, it, it's a lot like playing poker. So in poker, you play you can't win every hand that you play, but how you play those losing hands, how you you know can set you up to win other hands. And Absolutely, it, it's a lot like that in that you can't you're, you you kind of recognize that you know I can serve this client better by you know, getting them to go back to the branch, but that client becomes an advocate and a referral source. And Oh, absolutely. Well, we, we have actually, it's funny because we've had customers that have decided to go elsewhere just because of their own reasoning. And as you know, we do annual reviews and, uh, uh, and budgets with our customers and we'll still keep them on our program. And in order to be on our program, you have to be a customer. Well, you know what? Um, it, it's amazing how we'll do this, this uh, after sale process with the customers and so you know what? We never even got. We never even gave Greg the deal, but he's still doing it with us. Holy smokes! And the you know the spinoff and the referrals from that, the introductions are, are great. Right. So one of the other things that I find is that any successful mortgage broker, they have a system and a process. Like it's not they don't just get up and kind of see what's going to happen. And they're also willing to tweak that process to get better results. So would, could you share an example of either a sales process or a follow up process or something that you have in your business and how you tweaked it to to get a better outcome? Well, you know, I know I just get up in the morning, come to work. I don't know what you're talking about. Really? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I think that everybody has to have a process. Everybody has to, yeah, and you have to make it better. And, you know, it's funny because we, we've been one that, like I've been doing this 25 years. I'm, I'm an old guy, and uh, I, I learn every day. I learn from the, the new guys in the office. I learn from other people. I learn from you. You know, it's, it's a matter of coming up with different ideas that are going to help you be more efficient and more productive. Um, you know, our, our process is pretty easy. Uh, the big thing is follow-up. And, uh, you know, not only do we use the company CRM program, which is fantastic, but, uh, but we, we, you know, we do, we do what we say we're going to do. And I've always heard the under-promise and over-deliver, and then I heard somebody say the other day, over-promise and over-deliver. And I think that's, that's good. The people just want to be talked to and communicated with. And that's our, that's our big strength, is that everybody knows what's going on through the whole process. Mm-hmm. And so just could you, I know in the past we've talked about your uh, annual review, so can you just give a little snapshot of what that, what that typically looks like? Sure. Um, I mean, the, the big thing is everything in your financial life is based on cash flow, right? So what we do is when the customer comes in initially, I meet every customer, a lot of guys don't, mm-hmm. uh, but everybody in our, in, our, in our group does meet the customers usually twice. And, uh, and our philosophy is that, um, you know, the after sales support is where we get our referrals from. And we do stuff that nobody else does. So basically, everything in your financial life, as I mentioned earlier, is based on cash flow. So we help them with some budgeting tools. And, and then the key with it is that um, at the end of the year, if you actually track your expenses versus your income and have money left over, what traditionally happens to it is it disappears. Mm-hmm. So what we do is we actually contact the client at the end of the year on the anniversary, and we find out what's changed. Because everybody's life changes on an annual basis. So things can change. Children, divorce, all kinds of things that create either opportunities opportunities for the consumer or allowing us to help them. So an simple example is uh, at the end of the year you find out that their income went up by 6000 bucks. Traditionally it just disappears. So what we give them is we give them some options and we say, you know, if you take that six grand and put it on your mortgage, it reduces your amortization. However, the more income you make, the more taxes you pay. So if you take that 6000 bucks and put it in RSP based on your taxable income and you get the money back, put that towards your mortgage, it's just coming up with something, something. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the key. Nobody does anything like that. 
um, an example we use is, you know, the oil light in your car comes on and you're phoning the dealership to get your car in to get the oil changed or the dentist phones and says, hey, it's time for your cleanup. Come on in. But nobody does anything for your financial planning process. So, uh, you know, one of my favorite phrases is people who fail to plan, plan to fail. Mm-hmm. I, no, I totally, that process. I totally agree. Our industry is very bad at, or we're very good at doing the transaction and very bad at. Oh, staying. It's, it's the McDonald's mentality: one billion served. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. You better have it's a smaller number of people that you really are, are able to serve more often. So, just can you give me an example? So let's let's just role play for a second. So if I'm your customer and it's a year goes by, what do you typically when you phone them? What would you say to me? So I've answered the phone. I'm like, hey, how's it going? And obviously we have a good rapport. But so what would the like? How do you? What's the Hey, I just would be interested to know how you bridge well, that. We, we actually send out the we, we send out, we tell the people up front we're going to send you out an end review mm-hmm. on your anniversary date. Um, it comes out through our CRM system. Uh, one out of four people will send it back, fill it out, and send it back, which gives us the information we need to help them. Uh, and then what we do is we get a report that says, um, okay, these are the people that answered back. These are the people that haven't. Then we email directly from the office. Um, and then we get about two out of four that send it back. Then we phone them. And I think the key there is that people get busy in their lives and they go, what the hell is this? Or it goes into junk. The key there is that we have a series of questions that we ask them um, so that we can we can figure out what the best route to go is with that extra cash flow. Or in the other respect is if they're in trouble, we can help them. They're not putting their heads in the sand. So, you know, the electronic information goes out. They know it's coming to them. And at the anniversary day, we say, okay, hey, listen, it's time for your interview. Oh, right. Yeah. Listen, can we get that information from you so we can figure out how to help you? Mm-hmm. Well, I think, and you, the key thing there too is, like you're saying, is you, you actually set up the expectation up front, so it's not like right up front. You, in the first meeting or whatever you're doing, you're saying, "Hey, we stay in touch with you, and you're going to hear from us." So that when they do, it's not like, "What is this?" And yeah, yeah so we're we're actually actually Scott, we're building we're building a calculator app, which we're going we may make available to uh, to other brokers. Cool, uh, I'd so love uh, let me know when that comes live. That. So uh, and we're going to take a look at that because uh, it just simplifies the process. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but it, it's, you know, and, and people love it. They go, you know, it, it's funny because they'll, we'll finish up with the, the information and send it to them and then they'll go to work on Monday and we get the calls on Monday saying, hey, you know what, uh, I just, I was just talking to one of your customers and they said they did this annual review with you and you showed them how to, uh, by using the extra six grand, they paid down their mortgage by three years and they put money into RSPs and according to the rule of 72, if you, if you get a 9% return every eight years, it doubles and you'll have this much retirement. It's just a plan or they take the extra money and go to Disneyland like it. It's a, it's the process, right? And I think that's the key. So um, you know, it's just it's, it's just following up and doing what you say you're going to do. It's and it's about helping them be. You're kind of being a coach and then making them be intentional about where the money's going. Because otherwise, like you said, it's just going to it'll be gone one way or the other. It's just did you decide yeah, where it went? Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, as we say, you know, at the end of the year, with that money that's in your bank account, we always ask people where does it go, and they go, it disappears. I mean, I put a cloud and I put poof. You know, like it, it does, it goes. So. Mm-hmm. So, it's just a different process. No, I, I agree. I think that's a fantastic. If it, when that becomes something available, then let me know, and I'll, I'll definitely want to share it, and ch- I want to try it too. So <clears throat> one other thing I'd like to ask is, so what one habit or thing that you've been doing, you've been doing this for 25 years, and I've met people who've been brokers for 25 years, and some of them are worn out and exhausted, and they, they don't have any life, and there's other guys like you that are still you know going and, and having fun. So what one thing or habit do you think has made you successful over these last 25 years? You know what? I think the example of this morning helping the customer out where I don't get paid um, because I'm still helping the customer out. And if you look after the customer and the group that work with you, um, everything else looks after itself. I never worry about the pocketbook at all anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think the key is to be honest. you got to have integrity. And all we have is our reputation. So, you know, um, it's funny because, you know, we're, we moved from Vancouver to Nanaimo 16 years ago for lifestyle. And I saw in the newspaper this morning in the province that the, the, the day, the day of the 599 um, first time sort of crap box house in Vancouver is gone. They're gonna the prices are higher, and the mortgages are way bigger there. But I just find that that we we just I don't care if it's a hundred thousand dollar mortgage or a six hundred thousand dollar mortgage, you get treated the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know, I think that's that, the key. Is everybody's the most important customer at the time when you're sitting with them. So uh, yeah, that's great. So look after the customer, and they they'll look after you basically. Absolutely. 
and that's the same with your referral sources. Like, uh, you know, we did we did a module at home today for thirty eight thousand bucks. Like, you know what? It, it doesn't matter. And uh, the accolades we got from it was unbelievable. And and all we're doing is we're treating this little gal that re relocated from Vancouver to Nanaimo into a mobile home park the same as we would with uh, uh, the couple who just moved from Ontario that bought the the eight hundred thousand dollar home in Parksville with with their twenty percent down. So I, I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. um, we look after everybody. And you know what? People pick up on that too. Cause they, there's, I think that the, you get a natural vibe from someone. If they're the same with everybody, then you, you feel like they're consistent, they're trustworthy. And if they're not, then you get, yeah, there's this, this sort of radar that goes off. Well, like you say, all we've got is a reputation, right? And, uh, and it's, it's just amazing. When I started in the industry in in the tri cities, Coquitlam, Port Moody, Port Coquitlam, you know, there's probably eight or 10 of us. Uh, now I know I, I'm not over there as much anymore, but uh, there's, I don't know, there's got to be a couple hundred. When I started in Nanaimo in 1998, there was, you know, a dozen of us at the peak. There was, I think there was a hundred. And so, you know, I mean, it, there's just so many people coming into the industry um, with that false hope that it's just easy, quick money, and it's going to be pretty straightforward. And, and that's good in a great market, but, you know, we're cyclical, right? Mm -hmm, for sure. So I also like to ask you about, so you have a family, like you had mentioned, and you have this mortgage practice you've had for a long time. So how do you balance your family and, and your practice? And just maybe give us an example of a way that you keep that in check. I think the key is communication and educating people. Um, you know, from the beginning, uh, I change my voicemail usually two to three times a day telling people exactly what I'm doing. I don't necessarily do that. Uh, you know, I'll return calls at a specific time, but if I'm busy, um, people know that I'm busy and I'm not going to get back to them until this afternoon. Or the philosophy that we have in the office with our referral sources, which is great, is when you phone the office and you can't get a hold of me, hit zero and talk to somebody else. I don't care who you deal with as long as you deal with somebody in the office. Mm -hmm. and, and that's been the key for referral sources. And, and of course, on the customer side, um, we tell people, you know, if I'm not here, hit zero, zero will put you in touch with somebody. And we're the, we're the go-to people. We don't want you to phone MCAP or Scotia or, or Street. If you have a question about your stuff, you phone us first. Right. So you're talking about like a client calling in for, with a servicing question. Any just question. Don't just get, we'll take, call us first. Yep. So, and, and as far as balance, I mean, I, I, I don't work weekends. It's funny. I started doing uh, weekends again about uh, five weeks ago because I'm doing uh, some, pr some of the programs with Greg Williamson. All the rest of the crew is just listening to his webinar right now, but uh, with the church program. So I'm doing open houses with realtors again. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It's fun. And I'm only out there for two hours. Right. But uh, I don't work weekends. I take lots of holidays. And people understand and know that uh, um, I'm not available. They say, "Can I meet you on Saturday?" No, nope, sorry, because you know what? That's my family time. I'll meet you during the week in the evening if I have to, and if I work late, I don't come in till later in the morning. So, you know, I still put in my long day, but uh, I, but I like what I do, and uh, but I don't work weekends and and I take lots of holidays. And people, my, my customers and and my referral sources understand that. Right, and I think people respect it too if they know that uh, yeah that if you're. Obviously, you have priorities. Uh, the work's important, but yeah. It's funny because years ago, I remember when, when my house was in Cubs and I would leave a message saying, you know, when we, it was just myself, and I would say, I'm, I'm away from the phone because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a beaver leader, uh, and uh, I'm going to be away from my phone from, you know, 7 till 9, so I'll get back to you tomorrow. And, and people like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that. Yeah. yeah, they it humanizes you, if you will, that they realize, hey, you're just like a normal person like them who has, yeah, that's good. Absolutely. So now I'd like to move to some, I call them rapid fire questions, which are, you can, yeah. you don't have to, you can answer them a little quicker if you like. But so the first question I have is what is the number one thing you think is holding back most mortgage brokers from being successful? I think perceived competition, um, uh, the, the rate, the rate game, um, there's minimal training for new brokers and the key is that, uh, mentorship, got to have mentorship. Right. And, and, uh, so what do you mean by like, what would make a good mentor? Well, you, you got to be able to work with somebody who you can learn from. Uh, that's the key in follow around. I think the biggest, I don't think there's anything you can learn in books in this business. You have to have some natural ability. So I think that kind of weeds out people as well. Um, and, and I think in a slower market, you really got to have some systems in place and something that's unique and value added. Mm -hmm. If you're just dealing with a rate, well, everybody has that. Right. That's, that's just the, yeah, everybody has the same. Yeah. You have to have more than just rate. You got to have a plan or a yeah. strategy or a, absolutely or a maneuver. And, 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 and most people don't same thing that you were talking about earlier. People just show up for work. You know, you can't do that. You got to figure out, okay, how are my call sheets done? How many people do I have to talk to? It's a little bit more uh, structured around that than anything else. Mm -hmm. 
So another thing that I find too, good mortgage brokers, they find ways to do things easier, either through software or through internet programs. Or So do you have like a, an internet resource, either a program or something that you've used in your business that's, that you've, that's helped you out? Scott, I am an antique man. I am an antique. Does someone else in your office use any software programs? Yes, yes, yes we have. Uh, um, like I said, we had somebody develop this app for us, which is going to be really helpful because it was just a manual process or an email process that got sent out. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we're, we're trying to get people to utilize our website and our Facebook page and communicate that way and get updated information. So um, our customers get uh, pretty consistent emails. Um, but but not fluff. I'm not sending about recipes and how to plant your garden. It's more specific to w what they need to know. You know, tax time. We send them about all the stuff about how your taxes work. You know, if you have any issues about the taxes, here's and we go through the whole process. So that I think that's the key. Uh, Facebook's been a good tool for us. We're just putting out questions. Uh, what I find it, from that perspective is that uh, our customers love the photos and they like to see the personal side of the business. Right. So, See? so the stuff that we do, whether it's community based or uh, Christmas time, we do um, we do a uh, um, secret Santa thing. So we deliver um, to fa eighty six families. Oh wow! This year. So and uh, then then the next two days after that, we uh, we dressed up and went around to all the real estate offices and gave away shots of Bailey's and candy canes and kissed all the you know all the <laughs> realtors like that stuff too. Hey, okay? realtors love that stuff too. Oh yeah, no, it's fun. Okay, so, that's so that personal side of it again. I think that's what people like. Yeah, it, yeah, that's totally. And I can see that your your personality. You're very good at that stuff. So another question I have is: so what book would you recommend? Like, what what book has had a big impact on you that you think that would, other people should read? You know the book. Um, I met Peter Legg years and years ago. I think it was, uh, gosh, um, around 2000 at the Painters Lodge on an MCAP uh, event. And he brought a book called The Runway of Life. And uh, just after that, I had uh, a car accident where I was hit by a car and beat up pretty bad. And that's when we changed our philosophy, where we changed from that McDonald's sort of attitude where we were just serving a billion and uh, changed how we dealt with our customers. <clears throat> so that one has really affected me. I think it's a great book. Um, the other one that I really enjoy is Wealthy Barber Returns. Mm -hmm. Both books I give to my customers. Even both books? Yeah, or, well, you know, it's specific. When they come in, we know which one to give to them. Right. So, but those those are sort of my two. I'm not a big reader, but, uh, and I do a lot of uh, internet stuff, but uh, those those are my two favorite ones so far. And uh, I haven't actually read The Runway of Life, so I know that I've met you one time, you told me about it. I gotta, I'm got i going to put it on my list and read it so that I can, next time that we chat, if, I'll... If, if, I'll you, if you don't have one, I'll send you one. I'll, I can get one. I like to read them on my iPad, so it's, uh, then I, it, there's no, you know, it's, I can download it in 30 seconds. Yeah, I know it's a good book. And The Wealthy Barber Returns is also good. It's pretty funny, actually, you know, they're, 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 you know what they are? They're real basic. You know, The Runway of Life just talks about your life as a tape measure, right? You know, I mean, how much time you have left, and tomorrow's the first day of the rest of your life, so make it, make it count. And that comes back to that whole, you know, the planning process, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, another question I'd like to ask is, so where do you think our industry is headed? Like, where's the opportunity for mortgage broke? Somebody who's in the business, maybe one to five years, and they're thinking, okay, what, what's, where's the opportunity in, right now? I think the key now is database, database management, you know, understanding your customer. And if you start with one, it's a clear out commercial, right? And you get two leads from the next year, now you get three. Um, that's that's the key. So I think that you know we have to run our businesses the way that uh, the charter banks do. We have to get more products with our customers. So with new ancillary services that we can offer through different resources, I think that's key. Uh, aligning yourself with uh, corporate memberships or corporate customers as well. Um, and the big thing now is, is really working the database and making sure that if people are happy with the service you've given them, uh, that you they, that they refer to you, and, and that's I think that's the most important aspect. So I don't think it's going to get easier. Um, I think that uh, you know we've seen lenders drop out of the market. We may see more. Um, we need more competition from that perspective. I think we just have to work smarter, not necessarily harder, but we have to be smarter with our customers. Right, and and creating those multiple biz lines of business or multiple uh, offerings and and building a relationship will go a long way to to keeping your business growing in the next oh, ten years. Doing stuff that's doing stuff that's simple. We one of the things that we've incorporated is that four times a year we have little sessions either in a financial planner's office or an accountant's office, and we have people come in and speak. And then we have what we found is that you know we'll have an accountant come and talk about tax planning. We'll have a uh, an, uh, a lawyer come in and talk about um, estate planning, 
and we try and be specific with the group that's in there, but we find that the group that sits around the table, we have a questionnaire, and they start talking to each other, and the round tables are unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Right, so we, you know that that's one thing. The second thing that we're incorporating this year is with budgets. We're going to start doing two different grade groups. We're going to have thirteen to sixteen year olds come in, and seventeen to nineteen year olds come in for the kids of our customers, and talking to them about budgeting. How to, you know how much does it cost to live? What are you going to do when you get out of the house? That kind of stuff. Explain to them what taxes are. I know that I've had conversations with teenagers, and you explain when they you know have a job and they're going to get maybe eight dollars an hour, and they think they're going to get all of it, and they oh, don't. Yeah. They just like what the government takes money. Yes, they take money oh, from yeah. you. <laughs> Do you know how much cheese costs? Oh my god. Yeah, it's it's you great. Know, it's, it's it's quite funny. So. Uh, it's just, you know, we're going to sort of change the way we deal with some of our customers and the kids, right? Because that's the next generation. And, of course, I, I won't be dealing with those, but uh, Brad and Miles and Eddie will. Mm-hmm. That's great. So you segment, uh, you know, stay in touch with your database, segment, and then provide value beyond, like you said, with these roundtables. And and that'll keep you busy for the, for the long term. Absolutely. Okay, so last question. This is one of my favorites because it helps me think how, what you would do if you um, were to start over. So imagine that you woke up tomorrow, you sold your business, you moved to another town, built basically the same size as Nanaimo, and you have no contacts and you have a contract so you can't contact any of your old clients. So what would you do? What would the first three things you'd do to start building your mortgage business? Well, you know, you start from scratch and you go back to basics and it's, you know, our, our job is all a numbers game. Right, so you know, I did that when I came to Nanaimo, and I came here in 1998, and I, you know, knew a few people, but not a lot. And what I did was I, I contacted uh, one person. You know, I started making calls, and, and like I say, it's a numbers game for me. So I know I have to make so many calls a day to get some to, to generate some leads. But I, I found someone who uh, who was willing to work with us, and then we just worked from there. So and I just go back to basics, and I understand that uh, it's going to take three to six months to get myself up and running. And uh, when we moved to Nanaimo, within the second month, uh, we were profitable and uh, we never turned back. Right. So, you know, I, I think the key is just to just to do the same things you've always done and, and, and go to new people and say, look, this is what we've done. It's been successful. Here's my here's all my information. Here's what we've done. Here's our uh, testimonials. Um, here's here's our process. And uh, if you talk to seven people and you get two of them, well, there you go. It, it's an easy process to go through. And then you just try to clone the two that were are willing you, to do business you with you. It. Okay, well, thank you, Greg, so much for doing this show with me. I really appreciate it. We've got lots of great insights on how to grow our business, and uh, I'm sure I'm looking forward to seeing you at the next conference. You got it. Thanks, Scott. Take Have care, man. Thanks for the call. Bye. Bye for now. Want to learn from the top five mortgage brokers in the country? Then you have come to the right place. Join Scott Peckford on I Love Mortgage Brokering. Hi, Broker Nation. If you enjoyed this interview, please take a minute, visit iTunes, and rate this podcast. If you do, you'll get three deals in the next month. Okay, that's not true, but I would really appreciate it. Also, I want to invite you to join me on a quest. After every episode, I personally take five minutes and think about one thing or one idea I can use to improve my mortgage business. I encourage you to do the same. Over the next 12 months, I plan to do 100 interviews and make 100 improvements. I'm going to track these to see how they impact my business and, more importantly, my bottom line. Visit ilovemortgagebrokering.com and post in the show notes what one thing you plan to do differently after listening to this interview and check out what other brokers are sharing. Also, if you'd like to connect with me, fire me an email at scott at robyourbank.com. I love hearing from passionate mortgage professionals who are interested in improving their business. Until next time, rock on.